you know, ISIL is among the best financed terrorist organizations, leaving aside state-sponsored terrorist organizations that we've confronted. I can't give you a precise figure on what its you know, current net worth is. Um, but, I, but I think an important point, though, is to not confuse funding with financial strength. Right? ISIL has amassed you know, millions of dollars in funding, but a terrorist organization's financial strength turns on its ability to continue to tap into funding streams, its ability to use the funds that it has, and also its expenses. You know, and ISIL, in its ambition to control uh, large swaths of territory, cities, towns, uh, and millions and millions of people, has a significant you know, expense side of its, of its balance sheet. And as we you know, work to cut off its access to revenue, ISIL's ability to deliver even a modicum of services to the people that it's you know, attempting to subjugate will be stressed. And so its ability to continue to hold that territory against you know, a population that in the past has shown you know, a willingness to push back against al-Qaeda types you know, is going to be stressed. These donor networks in the Gulf where money is collected, you know, there are you know, bundlers essentially who collect funds and move the funds out of the Gulf uh, into Iraq and Syria. I mean, one of the things we're concerned about, and again, we have recently designated some individuals who are involved in this activity, is the use of social media to solicit funds and the ability, frankly, to move beyond sort of person-to-person -person fundraising and to use social media as a way to raise funds, bundle those funds, and, and move them out of the Gulf into, the, into Syria and Iraq. And so that's something that we're very focused on.